Hey, wonderful person. We're back here again talking about narcissism. I'm your guy, Frank, and we got a new setup, a new background to help things out. Um, if you like videos like this, please push the like button. It tells YouTube you like stuff like this and you'll get more of it and it greatly helps the channel, so thank you. Also, if you want to get new videos, subscribe button because I'm going to be coming out with a million more videos on this stuff. I got a lot. I got way too much experience unfortunately with narcissists so let's get into it what happens when you figure out the narcissist game and you're around a narcissist on a regular basis they're gonna know they're gonna sniff you out right away that you know you got their game you you know their thing they're gonna know it because they've seen it before they've seen it a million times they go through relationships romantic relationships job relationships friendships uh, did I say family relationships? They burn through all those relationships a lot. You know, they go like, you know, the story is that they are on one side, they, they grow up in the family and then uh, some of the family doesn't want to talk to them anymore. Then they go on to the, this side of the family. Then they don't want to talk to them anymore. Then they're with the cousins. Then they don't want to talk to them. And then they're with their distant cousins. <laughs> yeah, relationships. And it's like that in romance and it's like that in jobs as well. So they've seen this before. So they're going to have a sixth sense of when you have figured out their game. Um, and it's also, I also think it's because it's a lot like, you know how we say blind people, when they lose their vision, they, their other senses become heightened. It's sort of like that with narcissists too. When they are more blind to the world, then they become more uh, acutely visual. Uh, 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 well, they become... <laughs> They have better vision for their inside world than uh, they do for the outside world. They don't want to be empathic. They don't want to feel your emotions. That, that, as far as they're concerned, that's your problem. They don't want to feel what you feel because they're going to make you feel terrible. That's part of the game that they play. But it's time for you to figure out the game that they play. And when you figure out the game that they play, I like to break it down into two kinds of narcissists. The family narcissist. This person is in the house and you're in the house. And then there's the workplace narcissist. The workplace narcissist is different because they have all these different avenues to go into. You're not their only supply of superiority that they have to make them feel good about themselves. And they will go on to somebody else if once you figure out their game. Now, all the narcissists will eventually, will not eventually, uh, initially figure that you are running some kind of game that you're trying a different tactic to catch them off guard see in their mind it's always a battlefield and they're on the battlefield and they're trying out different tactics to catch you off guard they're trying out different tactics to knock you down they're trying different tactics to boost themselves up they're doing that all 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 the time and so they suspect and expect that everybody else is doing the same thing. Everybody's trying to knock them down because everybody's the adversary and they're all trying different tactics and that this is a different tactic. And they're gonna turn up the volume on all the emotions, on all the, all the things, all the tools that they use. If it's cursing, swearing, uh, bringing up things that are embarrassing to you or motivating to you, uh, negatively motivating to you, they'll do that. They'll turn it up a little bit. Now, sometimes the narcissist figures this is just a phase. This is just a phase you're going through and you will snap out of it. And they just have to wait it out. It might be the case. Uh, let's hope it's not because once, kind of once you figure out the game of the narcissist, it's kind of like, you know, when you see a magic trick and you're like, oh my goodness, that is, I don't know how they did it. And then they show you and it's just like mirrors and stuff and it's really cheap. <laughs> you're like, oh, that's how they did it. How did I ever believe that what they were doing was real? How did they get me with that? And it's the same thing with narcissists. Once you figure it out, you, you're like, of course, of course. And they feel that right away, almost like a psychic sense to it. So, you know, sometimes people wonder what the narcissist is thinking about themselves, right? That the, 
because you know there's a saying that if you're crazy you don't know you're crazy right does the narcissist know that they're narcissists do they know that they have this terrible insecurity do they know that they are verbally abusive that they're causing a lot of pain and trauma in other people do they know that do they know they're difficult or impossible to live with well yeah kind of they do like i said they burn through relationships they don't have you know they don't fall in love with the uh person in their high school or middle school and live happily ever after or have friends from those eras and have friendships happily ever after that doesn't happen with the narcissist they burn through all their relationships they make all their friends really angry at some point right they make their lovers angry and leave them at some point or the narcissist will get tired of them at some point and go on and to something else because they they got figured out at some point and so here you are obviously yes they know that they are difficult to live with they may not know what the term narcissist is now some narcissists go to psychiatrists not because family members suggested but because they go to a doctor a, a physical physician and the doctor realizes that this person probably needs therapy and they send them to they recommend a therapist for stress and that's where they get diagnosed they don't usually go anymore to the uh, therapist i like to say that people who need therapists the most want it to go the least and the people who need it the least want to go the most because you know i'd go if it was available for me for free to go to a therapist why not i would go there all the time i would go there religiously the narcissist has no use for it they would say i don't want somebody poking around in my head because they know they're difficult they know that this stuff isn't normal they know that they piss people off they know that they are causing people to be aggravated that's part of the game right that that's part of the tools that's what they use they want to piss you off they want to make you angry they want to hurt you at times because that gets you motivated to do the things that they want you to do and also it gives them that superiority supply like i talk about narcissist likes to be up here and likes to have people down here but if people are too close to them they like to beat them down to get that superiority supply then now they're feeling better because they feel that they have more superiority a lot more superiority and there's a lot more control over their inner battlefield than they did before that's what they like so you see a narcissist can actually be diagnosed and told that they are actually a narcissist and that they suffer from narcissistic uh personality disorder and they can see the videos that they are of what they are and that it's not going to change them only therapy medic usually medication can change them and that is not not usually a a successful thing because they, they have to want it and sometimes they do want it when they really blow up a relationship they that they really prized and if they are a low percentage of narcissism 10 20 30 percent um then so they are only a narcissist they're only in that narcissistic space about 20 percent of the time which is still uh, a devastating amount of narcissism but they can get out of that space about 80 percent of the time and think rational thoughts you know this is not great i shouldn't have said what i said it was terrible now they're not going to talk to me anymore you know, normal thoughts on what just happened but then they go back into the narcissistic space and said no that was their fault they you know and they they gaslight themselves about why they did what they did is right and then they have that superiority supply now they're back up here again right <laughs> that's how this works even if they are diagnosed with the issue and it it, it doesn't affect them they will gaslight themselves that this is you know this is okay somehow or this is just the way i am or even disavowing the information as correct 
say, oh, pff, that doctor was that that doctor was a quack. That was a scam. All they want me to do is go back there for more more therapy. They don't know what they're talking about. That quack is is such a, a a loser and a jerk, and I'm never going back there again. Now. Is that what they're really thinking? No, they're probably thinking, I don't want this person climbing around in my head because I don't know how to exist without being destructive. And that that's comfortable to me. I don't want to be vulnerable again and be crushed by society and life. I'm not going to let that happen. So I'm going to say anything and gaslight myself and everybody else around me to say that that's not going to happen and that's not good for it to happen to me. Or they will go into therapy and use the therapist to get out of therapy or crush the other person, destroy the other person that they're with. Because a lot of times they, they don't want to coexist with other people. They want to subjugate other people. That's 101 of narcissism. Uh, their arguments are not to uh, find a middle ground. <laughs> no, right? Come together, find a middle ground. No, no. Their arguments are to destroy you. And when you're weeping and crying on the floor, that's when they feel good. Now, they feel like they've done a good job, a day's work on you. Because that superiority gap is it's massive now. And they, they just love it. But if they have a diagnosis of narcissism, that doesn't change, doesn't change anything. And this is a little different for the workplace narcissist because the workplace narcissist has other places to go to. Once they, they'll burn through your relation, their relationship with you, they're done with you. They're on. They're on to the next person. They, they might come back to you. They will probably, if they have access to you, they'll come back to you in order to see if this was just a phase you were going through and you're soft enough again for some of their abuse. Maybe they could get their hooks back into you and get some more superiority supply. But, uh, and that's the end of that story, right? Because eventually they're just going to get tired of you gray rocking them, you know, where you don't show them much emotion or you just do the stare and blink technique that I just did a video on, which works very well, by the way. <laughs> uh, it confuses the heck out of them because they never dreamed that that could happen. And they just go on to another person in a workplace. They, uh, narcissists know that they're difficult people and they actually set up other people, periphery people, to jump to, knock another limb on a tree when that branch breaks. They already have somebody on the side waiting for them, especially if they're women. Women know how to set up uh, multiple relationships to cover for other the, the major relationships. In case the major relationships break, they have guys on the side that they uh, keep interested. So if he goes, they can go to them. I am not commenting on that, <laughs> on the morality of that one way or another. Uh, the guy is there because he wants to be, he hopes to be the next in line. I don't know. But the narcissist uses it more like supply, superiority supply. So if you're one of the main people in their workplace that has the main superiority supply for them, they're not going to want to let go of that so much. And they will increase their hostility, their accusations, their threats, until they figure out that you're just never going to come around for them. And then they'll be gone. They'll be done with you one way or another. So let's move on to the home place narcissist where the real trouble is. Because you're stuck with them. You have to live with them. Then what happens with the uh, home place narcissist? So you're at home. You're stuck with the narcissist. You start learning about narcissism. You start not taking the bait so much. You, you stop arguing with them so much you stop believing their tantrums and their threats and the whole hostility thing and that comes to a point that every narcissist has seen before right it's just, as long as they're not extremely young they've seen this before and it's the point that they dread because they start to realize that you are on to them yeah, so they start to, they know this, they know the pattern. You're not buying it anymore. And so, well, that's thunder. If you hear that, that's just thunder. Or maybe not, maybe that's somebody's car. <laughs> it's difficult to tell these days. So, <laughs> um, yeah, what they do is they don't really have a whole lot of tools in their toolbox, right? They have 
uh, aggression, name calling, threatening, that sort of thing. And so they're just going to dial it up, dial it up. It's going to get worse. So if it was here, now it's going to be here. If you're used to it being at uh, from a, a uh, scale of one to ten, maybe being a seven, eight, or nine, they're going to turn it up to ten, and they're going to invent level eleven and twelve to try and break you out of this pattern, to try and throw you for a loop. So if they think if you're you're figuring something out, maybe they can knock you back so hard that you'll forget about what you figured out, that it won't work, or maybe that they can find some kind of um, weakness in you that they haven't found before and use that. Or maybe the weakness in you is just not going deep enough, not going hard enough, not, not attacking you all full out. That's what they'll do. And so the hostility will go up and up and up. And if you have to live with a person like that, it's going to get, it, it, the battlefield and living the home of a narcissist is always a battlefield. The battlefield is going to get hot. It's going <laughs> to it's going to get World War II in there, because that's what the narcissist likes, and they think that they they don't they don't have much to deal with. You're threatening their battlefield supremacy, and they're going to have they're going to use the few tools that they have to get back supremacy on the battlefield, which is your home probably if you're living with them. So the narcissist is going to try these new things. It's going to start looking for those old triggers that used to work or looking for new triggers that might work. But eventually they do get a little bored. They say, you know, none of this, they think, you know, none of this is working on this person. Maybe I'll just try something different. Maybe I will lay off with the hostility for a while, let them get comfortable, let them feel nice, let them let their guards down, and then pow, hit them again. That's a tactic of narcissists. That's what they do. So <laughs> when you think, oh, they're healed. I healed them somehow. I'm not a psychiatrist, but I healed them anyway. Watch it, because they're going to come back even worse, because that was the technique. That was the tactic. Remember, they are on a mental battlefield. This is just tactics. Offense, defense, life, death, power, no power. This is where they live. And if they're being nice to you, then probably there is a, a sword, a verbal sword, a stabbing in the back at the end of that niceness. Because why would they be doing it? Why are they doing it? Why are they being so nice to you after they were so miserable to you for so long after you started gray rocking them? You know, not giving them the supply of emotion that they like. And they like that supply of emotion because it lets them know where they are in life. They're, they don't really know where they are in life. They don't, they're not like normal people. They know where they are in life or they imagine that they know where they are in life by how people respond to them. And if they don't respond in a real way, and that real way is being real angry, real emotional, really upset, because that's what the narcissist sees as reality, real reality, uh, the narcissist will see you're being nice and comfortable and laid back as not really being real. That can be faked. That's not the real, that's not the real them. I'll bring out the real them. And that's what the narcissist is looking for. And it, it kind of lets them know, lets them feel that they know what their reality is now. Because they saw the real you, they triggered you, you yelled and screamed and cried, and now they really know where they stand, which hopefully for them is up here, right? <laughs> that makes them feel good. Because it lets them feel safe. So eventually, it'll go up and down, up and down. The narcissist will try different techniques and different tactics to catch you off guard, try and get you, you know, like we've talked before. Now I'm trying to keep the sun from shining in here. But yeah, so they're going to try a lot of things and it's going to look like a loop. It's going to look like this on the graph. See, this is the abuse level that you had before. And then when you discovered that they're a narcissist and you know all the games and you start gray rocking them and the blink and stare methods, uh, it, the hostility is going to go way up. And then 
they're going to come way down, right? They're going to try the nice treatment, try and catch you off guard, get your walls to go down, and then they're going to go skyrocket up. And then they're down and up and down. And this this will continue until they realize that nothing they do is ever going to outwork the situation, or they'll get bored, or they have another supply of superiority for someone else, some other situation. If they can't go, if you can't go, and there are these two forces, eventually they will start to withdraw from you a little bit. That is when they realize that they are no longer able to work you, puppet you, pull your strings anymore. And then the shame of what they've done and who they are starts to kind of set in because they, the process is that they gaslight themselves Gaslight themselves, gaslight you, gaslight the other people, and it starts to feel real when they're doing all this gaslighting. But when you're showing them that they're broken every day, it doesn't work anymore. It gets harder and harder to tell themselves those lies. And just eventually, eventually just your presence will be too much for them to forget the shame of what they are and what they've done. They will, they'll be shameful all the time. It's, it's hard to be a narcissist. It's one of the hardest ways to live because you're always living in a battlefield. And if you don't live in the battlefield, you, you feel like you've lost the battlefield, right? Shame. Why shame? They're not arguing anymore. They, they haven't been like defeated, right? But that's how they feel. They feel like because they are living in this mental battlefield that if they're not able to win, well, what happens when you can't win in a war? You lose. They feel like they've lost. And what happens mostly like the warrior types, the macho super warrior types, what happens when they lose? Shame. They lose space. It's humiliating, right? And that's how they feel. They feel that they've lost. They feel that everything they did was for nothing. They, and they have all this negative stuff going on in the back of their heads that they usually gaslight the heck out of. But now it just comes pouring out because you're there all the time and you're showing them that you, you're not going to fall for their game anymore. And you, right? So eventually they're going to be like, oh, okay, okay, I can't do this anymore. I got to go. I got to do something else. Eventually that's, they, they will either get rid of you get rid of themselves or drift away into a situation or a relationship where you are just, it's just on paper or whatever, right? They no contact. They will no contact you. Uh, every now and then though, the narcissist will come back. So beware to see if you're amenable to some of their um, tactics again, because maybe again, this is just a phase you're going through. Now they've seen this phase a million times, but <laughs> maybe Maybe you can come back into their good grace again. Maybe you're weak enough now. Maybe something else happened in your life that made you weak enough. So if they hit you at the right place at the right time, boom, they can put their hooks back in you and start setting up those puppet strings again. This is how they think. And honestly, sometimes it is true. So I'm telling you about this whole... Um, game plan, narcissistic war game plan, because once you realize their game, their war strategies, they won't work on you anymore, right? You don't want to live in a war zone, <laughs> whether that war zone is in your four walls or, you know, on a real battlefield. You don't really want to do that. And the narcissist honestly doesn't want to do that either. That's why the superiority supply is here because the more superior they feel to people, they're kind of more separate from the uh, drudgery of the battlefield that they can feel like. So, but they, it, it, they are broken inside. And when you start to figure that out and show them that every day, they, they feel it. They feel how broken they are every day. Just seeing you reminds them of the horrible things they've done, said, and have become, honestly. Not just to you, but to uh, you know hundreds of people over the years, over the decades. Because, right, they mowed through people left and right, trashed them, uh, uh, you know, lovers, and uh, who knows? All kinds of horrible things went on, right? Family members, 
the people that they love, they hurt the most. So there's a lot of that going on too that they feel sorry about. And they can't get past that, especially if you're a family member and you're living with them, now they get to re be reminded every day <laughs> that they screwed up all those other family relationships. So they will go elsewhere. So you're thinking, wow, that is, that's a lot to unpack, baby. That's a lot to go through, <laughs> isn't it? Can't I learn what a narcissist knows and their game plan, their battle plan, and not let them know? So not to get them started down that path of defense and offense. No, the narcissist knows their world inside and out better than you know your world. And you could be very... Uh, focused and inward feeling and all the stuff, but the narcissist, their inner battlefield is all they have. That's all they have. They don't have to worry about you too much. You're just, you know, they're in their own world. They know everything that comes into their world. And you being there, that slight, slight, slight emotion change in you when they are triggering you it'll be so slight to other people other people won't notice it it wouldn't notice it at all and the narcissist will notice it right away at first they'll, they'll write it off like oh, maybe maybe they're having an off day maybe they didn't figure me out but after a few weeks or months of this they'll be like i guess they're figuring me out like everybody else did uh let's hope you know, and then they'll start the escalation and all that other stuff I just talked about. So there's no real way you can uh, fake them out on this. They know their battlefield really, really well. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't even attempt it. I mean, once you figure it out, you know they're going to know. And the way that you can figure out that they know that you've changed, that you're on to something, <laughs> right? that you know their game is when a narcissist starts to say something usually when they're in a narcissistic space right they're angry they're they're complaining or they're arguing they'll say something like you've changed you've changed and not for the good right or they'll say something like you're weird you're weird lately stuff like that some kind of change you know, insinuating that it's not good, whatever. Sure, it's not good. Not good for the narcissist. I also noticed that the narcissist uh, likes to um, say things from their point of view. So if it's not good for them, they'll make believe it's not good for you. So when they're saying that you're weird and that's not good, that's not good for them. And that's good for you because now you know their tricks. They will tell you. they Narcissists aren't great at hiding things um, from somebody, from the uh, victim. They're not good at that at all. If you can read the signs, if you know what the signs look like, you'll be able to read them six ways from Sunday. Because they telegraph everything. As soon as they start this weird stuff, you've changed, you're different now, you're weird, what's the matter with you, how come you're weird now, you know that they know, you know their game. <laughs> the gig is up. So, eventually you'll get to the place where uh, the narcissist is not in your life anymore. I mean, eventually you're going to get burned through the relationship with the narcissist. Eventually you will be free of the narcissist one way or another. And the narcissist knows this because they've seen all the relationships in their life go bye-bye and they know all the stages, all the steps and all the things. And when you get to the other side, let me tell you, the light is going to come out on your life. It is going to be like dawn. It's going to be a new, it's going to be like you were reincarnated into the same body, right? It will be dawn. Now you're going to have a lot of, depending on how long you stayed with the narcissist, you're going to be messed up. If you were with the narcissist for a long time, you're going to be messed up. It would be good if you could see a therapist on a regular basis because they'll know when you tell them you were the narcissist for a long time. They'll know that this is a textbook. They break open the textbook. Well, you got this, this, and this. And I haven't even checked for it yet, but I know you got these. And they can help you through them a lot quicker. You don't have to reinvent the wheel.
with yourself. They can prepare you to heal in ways that you can't even imagine yet, and in, in, in paths that you can't even imagine yet. And it will really speed your recovery and healing after being in a narcissistic relationship because that's what you're going to need. You're going to need recovery, uh, probably financial recovery, um, self-abuse thoughts recovery. Again, the narcissist always tries to personalize everything. And a lot of people that come away from personal uh, relationships with narcissists don't like themselves. They don't like their lives. They hate things. They want to hate things. And the things are broken in their uh, estimation because they're wrong to the core, but it, it, and it's not about habits. It's about what's wrong and who's wrong. Um, yeah, and uh, that takes a lot of healing to get through. Uh, but it's all worth it. It's all worth it. I'm sorry if you had to go through years or even decades with a narcissist because people that do look back at that as wasted, wasted time of their life. Like I wasted 30 years with a narcissist, 30 years with a narcissist. And they'll say, if I could go back in time, it could have been totally different. But I wasted all that time because you go, you spin the, the three distances I talk about, physical distance, psychological distance, and mental distance. You don't get any of those with a narcissist. Then your head is constantly spinning about the arguments that you had with the narcissist how wrong they are, what you're going to do next time, what you're going to say next time. And instead of figuring out your life, how to make your life better, how to get more love into your life, how to get more things that you love into your life. That's what a normal mind does. It doesn't, it doesn't focus on the puppet master in your life. They're always trying to battle and hurt you and get under your skin. So I hope all this helps you on your journey away from the narcissist because it's a it's a difficult it can be a real difficult journey depending on what kind of narcissist you have in your life and how close they are to you. And there's all that kinds of aspects I didn't bring up. But yeah it's terribly complicated it is but it's worth it to get to the other side instead of being in a relationship where you're constantly confused, you're constantly arguing, you're constantly being upset or afraid of being all those things. That's not, there's no way to live in a psychological battlefield constantly. Your nervous system, your blood pressure, if you have diabetes, your diabetes numbers will be up. I've seen people's diabetes numbers uh, come down so low it was almost dangerous. Because they just got away from the narcissist. And they weren't even living with the narcissist. The narcissist was, was just somebody in the neighborhood. Was a family member in the neighborhood. They weren't even living with them. And when they moved, <laughs> they, it was almost like they didn't have diabetes anymore. This is affecting your life. And when you get away, it's going to open up all those affected areas. And you're going to become the great person that you know you can be. And when you get away from the narcissist, your life is going to open up in ways you can't even imagine, to extremes you can't even imagine. It's so it's all worth it. When they say it's better on the other side, it's better when you go through it, it gets better, it does. It's worth it. And then well, you will be so knowledgeable about a narcissist that you will never want to go that way again. And you have all these videos to look back on, not just my video, but there's a ton of other videos out there on narcissism. Now, I do narcissism as a face-to-face -face thing because I have face-to-face -face relationships with people. And I, I'm not doing these faceless, uh, you know, 10-point bulletins that are cranked out like link sausages on narcissism or anything else. I have personal experience with it in the workplace, living with narcissists, n narcissists in your family. I also have 20-odd uh, years experience with people with with um, learning disabilities uh, of all ages, uh, from kindergarten to adults, to old age adults, right? So yeah, I have a lot of experience in this sort of thing. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff, so I want you to figure out where you are on this journey and to know 
the battle plan that the narcissist has and when you know that you'll be able to navigate their minefield and their battlefield and get out of it with at least little damage as possible instead of just being utterly destroyed and whittled down and then wasting more time in your life life is short baby life is short any moment you spend spend with a narcissist in my opinion is wasted because I spent time with narcissists and that's how I look at it that time was just wasted it was wasted wasted on them wasted on some person who didn't even value it didn't value me and my time I could have done so much better things with that time so I hope this helps you and on to next time